uh, it's about a minute past six, so it would be my comments. Um, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Byrne, Engineers Ireland's Director of Sectoral Engagement. And on behalf of Engineers Ireland, I'm delighted to warmly welcome you all this evening to this, our first ever, ever virtual conferring ceremony. Our annual conferring events are a celebration of the achievement of registered professional titles, a milestone in an, in an engineer's career. And it is a very special occasion for us and for you, our members and your families. Our immediate past president, Marguerite Serres, was president during the time each of you achieved your title. And we are honored to have Marguerite with us this evening to celebrate with you. Due to COVID-19, we were unable to hold our traditional regional conferring ceremonies and our national conferring ceremony in Dublin as planned. But this virtual event allows us and the engineering community to recognize and celebrate with you this great achievement. A graduate in electrical engineering, Marguerite is executive director, customer solutions at ESB, chartered engineer and a fellow of Engineers Ireland. And I would now like to invite Marguerite to open proceedings. Thank you very much, John, for that introduction. And ladies and gentlemen, it's great to be able to welcome everybody this evening. And I'm really delighted that we can host this virtual conferring ceremony. Uh, obviously, we'd all like to have had an actual ceremony in person. And unfortunately, as you know, because of circumstances, that's not to be. And I'll come back to that uh, a little bit later. John has covered it a little bit already as well. So what we are celebrating this evening is your achievement of a registered professional title in Engineers Ireland. And those titles represent an awful lot of hard work on your behalf. The application process that I'm sure you remember fondly and that you've just gone through and all of the associated documents and submissions and the interview. But more than that, it's a recognition of everything you've achieved in your careers to date. Achievement of a standard that's now recognized by your peers, by your profession and your professional institution. So it's really an evening for celebrating. And we have 329 conferees uh, joining us this evening, which is an amazing number. And it's a great uh, you know, tribute to the profession and how interested people are in progressing. So I would particularly like to welcome you because you're our guests of honor, obviously, this evening, but also your friends and family to this virtual event. So while I suppose we're really happy to have this event, as I said, we would have liked to have met in person. And traditionally this event, in my experience, has been held in one of the Radisson hotels. And most recently, I suppose, the, the Radisson St. Helens in Stillorgan. And some of you online might be familiar with that hotel. And um, it's got really nice grounds. We've been really blessed in the last number of years to have fine weather. It's a really lovely occasion. We can individually recognize all of you at the podium. There's lots of photographs in the garden, a really nice reception. So maybe virtually you could try and put yourself there this evening. It's difficult given the weather we have now in November. But uh, I suppose we were really hoping to do that. That's how we would like to honor you in achieving what you've achieved. But unfortunately we can't do that this evening and we didn't want to wait any longer uh, because obviously people are keen to be able to use their titles and to get their pins and parchments. So we have six categories this evening and uh, they are engineering technician, associate engineers, chartered engineers, fellows, fellow by presidential invitation and honorary fellows of Engineers Ireland. And all of you are going to be admitted uh, to the, the role with your relevant title um, in, in you know, the coming uh, days once, once we have this evening's event. So I'm joined this evening by John Byrne, who you've met already, Director of Sectoral Engagement, also by the Director General of Engineers Ireland, Caroline Spillan, who you'll meet later on, and also Morris Buckley, who's the current president, uh, is going to join us later on. Uh, he, he's tied up at another event at the moment, but he is going to join online. I also really want to thank the really dedicated staff we have on the membership team. And again, you'll meet some of those this evening. But they really worked hard and I know they would have given a lot of help to all of you in going through the process in the last year or so. And uh, in our title review process, there's, there's a lot of work and a lot of steps involved and they do give an awful lot of help. So namely want to call out uh, Shirley MacDonald, Debbie O'Sullivan and Lucy O'Neill. Also want to pay tribute to Maureen Niengesa who's put uh, this event together this evening. She's from our sector support team and um, many of you would have interacted as well with Maureen in past months. So most of you will have already, if you've heard me mention the parchment and pins, some of you will have uh, re received that already. The remainder of you, it will be delivered by post in coming weeks. 
And the purpose of this evening is to pass on our heartfelt congratulations to you all to mark the occasion and to get, I suppose, as close to in person as we can get. So if your friends and family are with you, you, they can rightly also feel very proud of you and happy in celebrating this conferring ceremony this evening. And we do want to thank them for the support that they gave you in helping you to achieve this honor as well. Around the globe, engineers are the people who design, create, explore and innovate, working to solve some of the world's greatest challenges. And we know there's no end of those challenges. Engineers are at the forefront of the latest developments in technology and in the fight against climate change. Behind every design-led engineering uh, solution are communities and families that benefit from that creation. Our Engineers Ireland vision statement says that we are a community of creative professionals delivering solutions for society. And that drives the work of our organizational strategy. So we're constantly striving to, I suppose, improve uh, the you know, condition of mankind. And in Engineers Ireland, as your professional body, we also wish to help you by giving you a solid foundation to support your individual career paths in future. Our organization, and some of you will know this, but it's actually one of the oldest membership bodies in Ireland, having been established in 1835. And across the island, and actually in, in worldwide, because we've members in lots of different countries, we have now got a total of over 25,000 members. And we really hope that, you know, the process you've been through in the last year, the title, and the fact that I'm sure you're very proud of your membership and your register title now as well, but that that will, you know, form a great relationship with Engineers Ireland that will be sustained and reinforced through our association and also through lifelong learning into the future. Uh, just a little bit of a plug, we have plenty of divisions and societies, so there's some place near everybody where you can get involved and we're heavily reliant on volunteers and, you know, if you are willing to volunteer in any capacity, we'd be really delighted uh, within the organization to get uh, the help that, you know, we get from so many people already and we, we really do value their help in promoting all of the aims and the strategy of the uh, institution. So attaining a professional qualification and an Engineers Ireland registered professional title, it is a very important stage in an engineer's professional development. But I suppose it's not the end of the process either because all of us are on a path of lifelong learning. So there's a few terms and conditions coming up now. So um, just actually, if anybody's uh, expecting that we're going to put you through any hardship this evening, you can relax. We just want to mark the occasion and uh, to thank you. And, and we'll get to um, naming each person now shortly on the screen through scrolling. But I just want to mention that there is, um, I suppose, a necessity to recognize that all of us need to be engaged in continuing professional development which is especially concerned with the development of real value to the professional. On joining Engineers Ireland, all members make a fundamental commitment to ongoing self-development and self-improvement. And it is this underpinning ethos, the professional obligation to continue to learn, that's a decisive contributor to the credibility in society of the engineering professional and the engineering profession. So our code of ethics states that members shall maintain and strive to develop their professional knowledge, skill and expertise throughout their careers. And it's the duty of each member to comply with the provision of our code. Our CPD policy requires members to undertake 35 hours of CPD activities each year, except for student members and also retired members. And I would like to remind you that members are required to record their 35 CPD hours and declare them each year using my CPD. It's really easy to use on our online recording tool, which is found on the website. So like I said, there are the terms and conditions and the small print out of the way. So now we'll get back to the celebration, but it is important you know, that people do maintain their engagement and their professional development. So this evening, we are welcoming, welcoming a total of 329 of you who have just received titles. Along with your parchments, like I said, you'll also receive a pin. This is my one here. And it really signifies your competence and skills. And we hope that you will continue to wear it with pride. I'd also to like, uh, in terms of thanks, we, we owe a huge um, vote of thanks to the chairperson and the members of our board of examiners. And I know probably, you know, you felt tension when you in, uh, encountered those people in the last year or so, but if it wasn't for them, you wouldn't be receiving your title this evening. And, you know, we're very grateful to them because most of them work on a voluntary basis for all of their help in assessing all of our applicants. And also the membership and qualifications board, as well, as I said, our assessors and interviewers. We're indebted to all of them for their dedication and professionalism and the way in which they implemented 
the professional review process. So I'd like to conclude now by expressing my hope that all of our conferred uh, individuals this evening will continue to realize your full potential and that you'll flourish and shine in your respective career roles. And I'm absolutely sure that you will. So I'm now going to call on Lucy O'Neill, who's from our membership team. And Lucy will introduce the first two of our six categories this evening. Thank you, Lucy. Hello, good evening, everybody. The registered professional title of engineering technician is conferred on those who've completed an accredited level six qualification in engineering and following three years postgraduate work experience have successfully demonstrated through their professional report and an interview process by their peers that they've reached the standard of engineering technician with Engineers Ireland. This evening we are delighted to be able to warmly congratulate and welcome um, to the role of Engineers Ireland five new engineering technicians. And um, now on to the professional title of Associate Engineer. The registered professional title of Associate Engineer is conferred on those who have completed an accredited level seven qualification in engineering and following four years postgraduate work experience have successfully demonstrated to the professional report and an interview process by their peers that they've reached the standard of Associate Engineer with Engineers Ireland and this evening we are delighted to congratulate and welcome our 10 new Associate Engineers to the role of Engineers Ireland. Congratulations everyone, well done. Marguerite. Thank you very much Lucy and I'd really like to add my own personal congratulations as well to all of our new Eng Techs and Associate Engineers. It's a really great uh, achievement as I said and many congratulations. So I would now like to invite Deborah O'Sullivan, who's our membership team lead and who, along with Lucy, has been instrumental in managing the professional review process for our members. And she's going to introduce our next category, which is that of Chartered Engineer, which is where we have most of our conferees this evening. So I'm going to hand over now to Deborah. Thank you, Marguerite. Good evening, conferees. And it's my pleasure to be here with you this evening. All 329 title recipients have been in contact with the sectors and membership team at some point in their journey towards a title. And it's wonderful that we can be here to celebrate and recognize the culmination of your great achievement. Beyond the statutory functions reserved for chartered engineers, achieving this registered professional title is a public statement of your confidence to practice as a professional engineer. It's a seal of approval by your peers that you have developed your ability beyond that achieved in your academic formation to that of a professional practitioner. It's also a mark of your commitment to the continuing development of your professional expertise and ethical practice. So why is this important? Well, because regardless of whether you're responsible for writing code for a banking system, or developing a medical device, designing a wind farm interconnector, or teaching our next generation of engineers, as a chartered engineer, you're reassuring the public of your respect and consideration for society, their safety and their security. And we all know that the public no longer desires this re reassurance, they demand it. The Council of Engineers Ireland is empowered to define and protect the use of the registered professional title chartered engineer under its Charter Amendment Act 1969, which states, you might not have read this in a while, so I'm going to read it for you. Chartered members of the institution shall be known as chartered engineers and shall have the right so to describe themselves and to use after their name, the abbreviation CENG. Such rights shall be confined to such chartered members and to persons within the state in respect of whom the council is satisfied that they are authorized to describe themselves as chartered engineers by a professional body recognized by the council in that behalf. Within Ireland, Engineers Ireland is the authoritative voice of the engineering profession on relevant national issues and is the sole authority toward the reg registered professional title of Chartered Engineer. It makes submissions and representation, representations to government and official bodies on national policy. So achieving the title of Chartered Engineer is therefore an important goal and watershed in any professional engineer's career. This evening's Chartered Engineer conferring confirms that successful demonstration of engineering formation and competence to practice professionally as assessed by their peirs during Engineers Ireland, Ireland's professional review process. 
This evening, we're delighted to warmly congratulate and welcome our 274 new chartered engineers to the role of Engineers Ireland. Well done, all of you. Thank you very much, Deborah. And again, I'd love to add my own personal congratulations to all our new chartered engineers. I'm now going to invite our registrar, Damien Owens, who's going to introduce the next category, which is that of Fellow of Engineers Ireland. Thank you, Marguerite. Engineers Ireland Fellows hold the most prestigious and senior professional title within the engineering profession. Fellows are highly skilled professionals who help to shape, influence and inspire both engineers and the future of the engineering industry. Fellows must first have attained the Chartered Engineer title and have held a position of responsibility in the design and execution of important engineering work for a period of five years. In order to become a fellow, they must, through the review process, be able to demonstrate that they are working at a senior level with responsibility in the design and execution of important engineering work or new technologies, displaying leadership qualities and expert knowledge in their field of engineering. We seek that applicants for the title of fellow are the go-to person in their own organization. Now as fellows, they are the go-to persons for the engineering profession. During the course of the year, 32 of our members achieved the title of Fellow of Engineers Ireland. Parig Black, Kevin Delaney, Mesfin Desta, Luke Fegan, Kieran Fennell, Stephen Flynn, James Gannon, Boris Johnson, John Johnston, mm -hmm. David Keating, James Kelly, Mark Lanfier, Mark Lucknan, Ronan Ling, Claire Lyons, Brian McFarland, Jared McInerney, Gronya McInerney, George McMahon, Jared Monaghan, Miriam Mulligan, Brian Mulry, Edmund Murphy, John Nolan, John O'Donovan, John O'Sullivan, Stephen Patterson, Colm Sheehan, Keith Sunderland, Roger Taggart, Desmond Walsh, and Joseph Walsh. We'd like to warmly congratulate you all on joining the role of Fellows of Engineers Ireland. Thank you, Damien, and warmest congratulations to our engineering technicians, associate engineers, Chartered Engineers and Fellows. Before I introduce our Director General, Caroline Spillan, to speak, I would like to say that if any of our conferees tonight are on social media, please tweet a picture of your parchment or mention that you received your professional title. We will be delighted and we will like and retweet your post. Our Twitter handle is at engineerireland.ie. So it's uh, singular, engineerireland, all one word, lowercase, dot ie. Thank you very much. I would now like to invite our Director General, Caroline Spillan, to introduce the next category, Fellowship by Presidential Invitation. Thank you very much, John. And it is a real pleasure to be with you all this evening. And I want to add what my colleagues have said, a very warm congratulations to everybody uh, on this very special night. Uh, it is a real testament to the amount of work that you've done to get this uh, accolade this evening, and it's a real pleasure to join with you. So uh, talking about uh, um, real pleasures, I suppose one of the privileges and honors of being president of Engineers Ireland is that you do get the privilege of inviting engineers who have distinguished themselves in the profession um, uh, and in society to accept fellowship by presidential invitation. And during her year, Marguerite invited five eminent engineers to join the ranks of Fellows of Engineers Ireland by presidential invitation. And we are indeed honored to have them, uh, that they have accepted this invitation. And tonight it gives me real pleasure to personally introduce them to you. And I'm going to begin that now. So I'm gonna begin with the first recipient who is Professor Aoife Hearn. And you can see Aoife there on the screen in front of you, a lovely picture of her. Aoife is College Principal of the College of Engineering and Architecture and Dean of Engineering at University College Dublin. 
As Dean, she has responsibility for the engineering programs offered by the college, ensuring their excellence and that they offer the best opportunities for their students to ensure they meet the needs of industry. Aoife actively engages with industry stakeholders on the existing programs on and on the development of new programs created within the college. Aoife also plays a key role in promoting engineering as a career and as a discipline both in Ireland and abroad, and in particular promoting the role of engineers in meeting the economic needs of Ireland and worldwide. Aoife feels it's imperative to promote the role of engineers in creating a more sustainable future for Ireland. In her current role, she also seeks to develop international links for UCD engineering through research and also through their joint program, programs in China. Aoife hopes to oversee a substantial growth in the college and to increase the number of engineering students that graduate from UCD in their engineering programs in response to what is needed both in Ireland and internationally in terms of uh, a future pipeline of engineers. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Aoife as a fellow of Engineers Ireland. Congratulations, Aoife. The next uh, person I would like to introduce is Laura Burke. And you can see Laura, uh, Laura's picture on the screen in front of you. Laura is the Director General of the Environmental Protection Agency, the EPA. She was appointed in 2011. Uh, she served as director since 2004. And as Director General, she has responsibility for leading the strategic management of the organization. The EPA's role is to protect and improve Ireland's environment, and it's earned its reputation as being a trusted and respected body recognized for its scientific integrity. With the growing importance and public awareness of issues such as climate change, air quality, water quality, and enforcement of environmental legislation, the EPA plays an absolutely central role in Irish society. Laura is also the chairperson of the European Environment Agency, the EEA, on their management board. The EEA aims to support sustainable development by helping to achieve significant and measurable improvements in Europe's environment through the provision of timely targeted, relevant and reliable information to policymakers, agents and the public. Prior to joining the EPA, Laura worked in the private sector. She is a chemical engineer, a graduate of UCD. She holds an MSc from Trinity College Dublin. She's a fellow of the Academy of Engineering and is also a charter director. In 2016, Laura was awarded the UCD Engineering Graduates Association EGA Distinguished Graduate Award. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Laura as a fellow of Engineers Ireland. Now I'd like to move on to the next recipient, who is Sean Casey. And again, we have a picture of Sean there. Sean is head of energy and asset advisory with Ernst & Young Ireland, where he leads the EY team in Ireland and the UK, delivering a number of major transformational projects and programs. Sean graduated from UCC with a BE in electrical engineering, he also holds an executive master's in business administration from UCC and a certified diploma in accounting and finance from the ACCA. His early career was with ESB where he spent 17 years in various different engineering and management positions where he built the foundations of his career in power and utilities. Sean has held various different senior management roles within industry. He was interim CEO of Ervia, where he was responsible for the performance of the Ervia Group, reporting directly to the board and shareholders. And prior to that, in Ervia, he was a Group Chief Operating Officer. He's also been Managing Director of Gas Networks Ireland, where he was responsible for delivery of an annual capital program of 130 million and Head of Asset Management and Operations with Gas Networks Ireland. At EY, Sean works with clients to help them address the rapidly changing landscape of the energy industry, technology innovation, and the drive for more efficient and, eco and an ecological future. It gives me great pleasure to welcome Sean as a fellow of Engineers Ireland. Congratulations, Sean. Our next recipient is John Jordan. John is Managing Director of Virgin Ireland, 
a sales and service subsidiary of the German premium equipment manufacturer. They specialize in road construction equipment and plant for the mining and processing of materials. John graduated in 1997 with an honors BE in civil engineering from the University of Ulster and received his ACCA certificate diploma in accounting and finance in 1999. In the year 2000, he was awarded an MIQ in quarry management and the following year, an MSc in technology management from UCD. His early career was spent with Roadstone provinces where he held a number of roles before joining SIAC as business development manager. In 2007, John took up the role of managing director with Virgin where he leads the company's overall business in Ireland, the day-to-day -day management of the business, strategy, operations, and financial planning. John is an associate member of the Institute of Asheville Technology and a chartered engineer with Engineers Ireland since 2013. He's also currently the chairperson of the Engineers Ireland Finance Committee, and he serves on the Council of Engineers Ireland and on the executive board. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome John as a fellow of Engineers Ireland. Congratulations, John. And then finally, Joseph Pendragon. Joe graduated with a BE in civil engineering from UCD in 1976. He holds a postgraduate diploma in computers for engineers and project management and legal studies. Joe's early career was spent as a graduate engineer with Ove Arup and partners in Dublin where he was involved in structural design for commercial, educational, medical, industrial, and entertainment facilities in Ireland and commercial and residential development in Baghdad. In 1980, Joe became a senior structural engineer with Ab Al Kalhal, consulting engineers working in Dublin, Riyadh, and Los Angeles on commercial, military, and educational facilities in Saudi Arabia, undertaking structural design for civil works and assessment of earthquake risks. In 1984, he joined DIT, now Technological University of Dublin, as a lecturer in structural design, structural analysis, and project management. Since 2014, Joe has been self-employed as a consulting civil engineer and structural engineer working on residential and commercial properties. Joe is a former president of the Institute of Structural Engineers and continues to promote internationalism in the profession, believing firmly that the future lies in collaboration with other international organizations with similar interests and objectives. And it gives me great pleasure to welcome Joe as a fellow of Engineers Ireland. Thank you very much. And I'm now going to hand back to Marguerite. Thank you very much, Caroline. So the granting then of honorary fellowships is one of the reserved functions of the Council of Engineers Ireland and as chairperson of council last year it was my honour to be part of the process where we considered nominations for honorary fellowship. Honorary fellows are defined in our bylaws as those on the role of Engineers Ireland who are distinguished by the importance of their work in engineering, science or otherwise whom Engineers Ireland wishes to honour. Our three candidates this evening certainly fulfill those criteria and I have enormous pleasure in introducing them to you. So first up, and again, we will have a picture on the screen. We have Murray Donnelly and Murray is the chairperson of Renewable Energy Ireland, an open partnership of sustainable energy associations working collectively to support the energy transition in Ireland. Previously, she was the director for renewables, energy efficiency and innovation at the Directorate General for Energy of the European Commission in Brussels. During her 30 years with the European Commission, she was a leading advocate of policies and strategies to accelerate the energy transition. She formulated key elements of the Clean Energy for All Europeans package uh, designed to put energy efficiency first, achieve global leadership in renewable energies and to provide a fair deal for consumers. Mari is a non-executive director of Tipperary Energy Agency, a social enterprise for energy efficiency, and also E3G, a climate change think tank operating to accelerate the global transition to a low carbon economy. And she is also a member of the government committee on, of Mari in Cork, the governance committee, sorry, of Mari in Cork. As European Advisory Board member of the Hawthorne Club, the only international network for professional women in the energy industry, Mary advocates uh, the appointment of women to senior positions and mainstream gender equality 
with the emphasis that equality is for both men and for women. So I have really great pleasure in welcoming Murray Donnelly as an honorary fellow of Engineers Ireland. So next up, and this will be a familiar face for many of you, we have Gerald Fleming. So Gerald uh, was gifted with the ability to, to be able to deliver bad weather news with a smile and dare I say a wink. Originally from County Wexford, Gerald, uh, uh, Gerald uh, attended University College Dublin, where he graduated with a Bachelor of Science in Experimental Physics with Mathematics in 1978. In 1980, he received a Master of Science following two years research in, in the Atmospherics Group of the UCD Physics Department. When he left university, he joined Met Aaron and after 15 months training at Shannon Airport, became operational aviation weather forecaster at the Dublin Airport office. In 1984, he was contracted to RTE uh, as their then on-air broadcast meteorologist, heading the television weather team from 1990 right up to 2008. During this time, he also led the Met Air and Forecast team assigned to FastX, which is Front and Atlantic Storm Track Experiment. And he also lectured in atmospheric physics and meteorology to master's students in environmental engineering at UCD. He has served as chairperson of the International Association of Broadcast Meteorology and co-chaired the first World Conference on Broadcast Meteorology. He also chairs the expert team on media issues for the World Meteorolo Meteorological Organization and the Public Weather Service Delivery Program Group for the uh, WMO. He is also a member of the management group on the WMO Commission for Basic Systems. In 2019, Gerald was awarded the Silver Medal Laureate by the European Meteorological Society for outstanding contribution to the communication of meteorological information through enhancing the public understanding of meteorological services. And he also has the distinction, I think, of giving me the most tongue twisters in a biog that I've had to deal with all year. But I have great pleasure in welcoming Gerald Fleming as an honorary fellow of Engineers Ireland. Congratulations, Gerald. And finally, we have Katrina Hallahan. And as Managing Director of Microsoft Ireland, Katrina is responsible for driving Microsoft's commercial business on the island of Ireland. In addition to managing the continued growth and expansion of the business, Katrina also represents the company on strategic policy, corporate affairs and communications issues, including overseeing a number of community education and innovation programs. Katrina joined Microsoft in 1986 and has held a variety of senior roles in both finance and operations, managing large teams with regional and global responsibilities across a range of functions, including business and enterprise services, as well as directing supply chain management, logistics, customer care, and IT and financial support for Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Katrina is a member of a number of boards, including IBEX board and its finance and audit committee and national council. She also chairs IBEX Innovation Science and Technology Policy Committee and is on the advisory boards of UCD and the Trinity Business School. This year, she joins the board of Keelings as a non-executive director. She is a member of the International Women's Forum, Institute of Directors, Institute of Accounting Technicians, and is a fellow of the ACCA. Katrina is qualified as an executive coach and is passionate about change management and leadership development. In June of 2015, the Women's Executive Network inducted her into its Hall of Fame following three successive years of recognition as one of Ireland's top 25 most powerful women. So I have great pleasure in welcoming Katrina Hallahan as an honorary fellow of Engineers Ireland. Congratulations, Katrina. Thank you very much, Marguerite. And I think that that concludes our uh, evening this evening. Um, but I would like to end by just making the following remarks. Uh, on behalf of Engineers Ireland, I would really warmly like to congratulate all of the people who have been recognised here tonight. Congratulations again to our engineering technicians, our associate engineers, our chartered engineers, our fellows and our honorary fellows. This is an evening of true celebration, allowing us to share in your success and your achievement. And it is a real pleasure for me and for my colleagues to share with you on that. At this point in the evening, as Marguerite had outlined at the very beginning, we really should be somewhere celebrating, having a, a toast of um, a glass of wine or a cup of tea, but unfortunately we can't. And I hope that you are joining with your 
your friends, your family, um, uh, virtually to try and celebrate as best you can under these circumstances. And maybe sometime in the new year, uh, we might get to do that in person. But at this point, in addition to thanking all my colleagues in Engineers Ireland, in the membership team and in the sectors team, for all of the work that they've done uh, on this event, um, I would like to, uh, to thank you and thank uh, your, your friends and family who have joined us on this virtual event. And we hope that we will see you in person again in the not too distant future. Thank you very much and good night. <laughs>